Tomahawk. I am here with my new line mate, Dom. Mike is a healthy scratch tonight again, but he's doing fine. Uh, Dom, what's up, brother? It's been a week. What's, what's going up, on, brother? man? We're back at it like crack addicts, All man. All right. So we got two games to cover. Uh, uh, the rematch with the LA Kings. Um, the Hawks did make it to OT, but they lost with one second left in OT from a goal by Kevin Fiala and an even better pass by former Blackhawk Philip Deneau. Deneau. Yeah, so that he had two assists that game. He was really good, very noticeable. I thought. Yeah. And it just sucks, man, when you see a um. A former hawk tearing it up on a different team. I hate it. What might what might have been, you know? Yeah. What might have been. Yeah, the Hawks thought, you know, they he was something well, they wanted him to be something more and you know, it kinda like reminds me a little bit of Davy Bowen. Like the he was a yeah. high draft pick, like, hey, this guy could be a potential number one center like guy and yeah, he wasn't. He he was more of a shutdown guy, more of a Troy Murray like guy. And uh Philip Deneau is almost the same, and he, you know, he was really good uh, with the Montreal Canadiens that year. They made it to the final, and uh, yeah. he, he ended up signing a big deal with the Kings last year to kind of ease Kopitar, I feel like, at center. He got two really good centers over there, and anyway, it, it sucks, yeah. but uh, he's having a good career, and I, the Kings, That's we both kind of predicted that they were going to come back, and... Yeah, the rubber match. Yeah, on get that. their get the revenge, and um, yeah. So, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, yeah. You know, like yeah, I figured we did did mention that it was probably gonna be a little bit of a, of a rubber match. And uh, to speak of too, talking about Deneau and the Montreal Canadiens, it's and talking about any of those French ones, you have to almost talk like you got some marbles in your mouth. So you have to pronounce <laughs> it. So I'm, I'm, many apologies to all the. Our northern uh, northern neighbors there, but I mean, if you're in the French Canadian persuasion, then yeah, I think you could totally understand. Um, but anyways, but the but the Kings game, yeah, you know, I think they were bound to bound to come back with a strong push, and the, I mean, the Hawks didn't really deserve to kind of hang in the first game the way they did. So I think reality check, uh, reality check time for that game to kind of uh, see everybody uh, where everybody uh, leveled off at. So, uh, just kind of just as an old, old man, you know, you just, those, those West coast nine thirty puck drops. Yeah, it's just, getting harder, man. Unless it yeah. really, game really means something. It's, vicious, it's getting you know? tougher, especially for me. And it, I, like you just said, for you, you're getting older too. It sucks, man. I'm putting the kids to bed and I'm like, yeah, I got to watch this game. I yeah. got to talk about it. And it's tough. And I mean, it's different when it's on the like a Friday night, Saturday night. I could, I could do it, no problem. But getting up early for work, yeah. I get up really early, and definitely tough. But uh, yeah, unless it means something, you know, it's it, yeah, it's tough when you're longer in the tooth. Just to kind of I'm a little surprised they that. they didn't uh, have a game against the Sharks. You know that, that they were out there, you know, and they they only played against the um, the Kings and yeah. the, the Ducks, but uh, and the Quackers. Yeah, it it's. It's it's wild because I mean even now like this would have been the uh, the the old time uh, circus yeah trip. around Thanksgiving yeah, yeah. right so yeah. like this is like a modified modified deal they didn't go all the way up the, the seabird seaboard yet they only just yeah, got a that couple was a of cities rough in. road trip I remember though 2010 the Hawks I think they did very well and you could just tell like hey this is a team of destiny you know these guys just you know. Yeah. swept california and went up to canada and almost did the same thing but yeah, yeah totally well and those were the fathers those were the part of the father's yeah, trip yeah too, the, right? uh, I, mean, I forgot to i forgot to up. mention that it, it it was the father's trip and um some good some good little things happened to a couple players you know in front of their dads we'll get we'll get to it but yeah. uh let's get back well i for a bright spot for me uh against the kings I thought Peter Morezik was good, man. 33 shots. Uh, his, yeah. or, I'm sorry, 33 saves. His first game back from injury. Uh, he he yep. was good, man. I, I don't blame him on any of those goals. That last goal by um, Kevin Fiala was just a beautiful pass by Deneau, and he, he was wide open. He just buried it. I can't blame him on yeah. that. That's a bright spot for me. And um, I, Taylor Radish scored on the power play. Nice goal. Uh, 
buried it by uh, Jonathan Quick. Uh, I thought the Hawks, yeah. you know, like they're 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 fighting, man, and I'm I'm actually I'm impressed. They're they got a point. They got a point out of this. I mean, anytime you're away, it's you, you want to come away yeah. with something. You know, you don't want to go to California and not get anything. And getting a point yeah. in L.A. was huge. And even though they lost, I I credit a lot of that to Coach Richardson. He's really got these guys playing under a good system, and and they, they seem to be playing for him. You know, they're they're all we've we've lacked that the last couple seasons i agree i think so too i think it's it's good to see uh that they're you know even though it's still really early it's good to see yeah they're actually playing for him and that you know it's somebody's actually done something you know instead of sticking with the uh the broken status quo and just sort of limping through the season on a tank like so they're actually trying so that's that's encouraging it, yeah it you know? kind of it's weird man it's it, it, we're like I think we're sitting third now in the central and St. Louis yeah. is at the bottom. That's just so strange to me. I don't know what the hell is going on with those guys. I know, but it feels good. It, it does, but it's like, well, we're supposed to be down there. What's going on? These guys are too damn good to be down there. We've seen it before yeah. though. Like when they, the year they won the cup, they were dead last by Christmas and they, they hired Craig Berube and we know what happened. Yeah. They made it to the final and they ended up beating Boston and won the cup. Yeah. So I, you can't count those guys out yet. I just don't know what's going on. It's crazy. And they're not panicking. I didn't hear any rumors about no. any coaches getting getting fired or moving moving guys and stuff, but they're they're sticking to it. They're still a dangerous team yeah. in my opinion, but it's it's still a little mm-hmm. early. It's I mean, we're we're getting there, but it's a little early. So hopefully, well, I don't care. I'd rather us get a better draft pick. I would hate to see like a <laughs> counter Bedard go to St. Louis and haunt us for the next what 15 years oh, yeah. that would suck but i it's weird man it's it's very weird to see that uh, they're down there though no that's true so uh that let's jump true. to the ducks game another game the hawks had no business winning i mean these guys were freaking outshot 41 to 22 in this game and i believe the first period they got one yeah. shot i was it it was like 14 to 1 or something it was it was really lopsided, super lopsided. Yeah, that's just, yeah. I, I credit Coach Richardson for keeping them, you know, awake and you know not quitting early because when you're getting throttled like that, it's just like oh man, it's yeah. just not our night. It's not going. On. It's not working. But the good thing is the Ducks couldn't no. score much. You know, I think the they that had is Troy true. Terry. I mean, you know, the, it, yeah, yeah, with that too. And then even you know, like he kind of. Here's some names that you forgot were some of these guys were younger prospects that landed in Anaheim. Like I remember hearing uh, Kulikov, Dmitry Kulikov, he was a big stand yeah. out there for Panthers yeah. for a long time. He ended up there, and then Adam Henrique uh, was a Devils, the Devils guy made all the way out there. And I mean, he did he did manage a point uh, in that game. I want to say, yeah, he's too. a good little player. I remember him on, uh, yeah, like you said, New Jersey. He was really good, and then, and I think they moved him out to. Uh, the, I think so he too. He had a good yeah, season really last a, a, year, I think, with Ryan Getzlaff. I think I claimed him on fantasy a couple times, and he always produced. Yeah. But uh, so hey, we got two goals from Tenority. Am I? Yeah. It's wow. Tenorti. This guy's uh, this guy's yeah, not a goal scorer. This one, guy's honestly. not a passer. He's more of a hitter, and this guy put in two goals. That's crazy. Yeah, he bookend. He played the bookend. He got the first and the last I, one. That's there, cr- so. I did see the last goal, and I I tweeted out, "Hey, good things happen when you throw the puck on net." And I think it ricocheted off two guys and pinballed in past Stolarts. Yeah, <laughs> and hey, puck game, luck, it man. ended up being the game, game winning goal for the guy, and that was his first uh, multi goal game. And it's pretty cool. It was like like you said earlier, it was in front of the dads and. You know, uh, Philip Roos also scored his first NHL goal, and his dad was in the building. I saw the cool picture they took together. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and uh, so, hey, well, we got three goals from the defense last game, and that's yeah. something. When's the last I, time? I was, when's, when's the last time you? Thought I that was just happen? gonna say last, last season. I think the the defense only put up like less than double digits or something goals. So I mean, yeah. that's that was brutal. That's really bad. Think but the, think of some of the pairings that we've had in the last handful of years. Like you, most of them, you just think they're a bunch of bunch of noobs, and they're they're hanging on for white knuckling it for dear life just to survive the game. Yeah. So I mean, any kind of offensive production, like that's 
you know, be still my heart. I feel like a lot of these guys that they're calling up, it's like almost like a last chance type of thing. And they're making the best of yeah. it. A lot of these guys are like even Max Domi. He's uh, not, I, I don't consider it not like a last chance, but like, hey, I got to prove myself. And no. you know what? He got two assists last game, him and Kaner. They're they're continuing yeah. to put up good numbers, and I know Max Domi is loving every minute of it. I mean, getting to play with Patrick Kane, probably sit next to him oh, in the locker God. room. It's got to be awesome for him. You got to look at that when that lineup card when it comes out, and and think the starting lineup is going to be going to be Kurashev, Kane, and Domi, and you just you can't help but double take it. Like, did yeah. I just did I just see Domi on line one? I think one? he's earned it, man. I think he's earned it. I, I obviously you'd, you'd think Taves would be your number one, but you know I, I think it's smart to spread those guys out, spread the depth a little bit, and you know make make yeah. another threat on another line. I think the uh, I agree. what was the the team? Uh, what were they? The Ottawa Senators used to uh, they had back in the day it was like Danny Heatley, Jason Spezza, Daniel Alf- Alfredson. They would kind of split them up a little bit, and these guys would just tear it up. Yeah. But then in the playoffs, they just load them all on the first line, and it would just be. Just a massacre for yeah. the other team. Oh yeah, yeah, that's where the that's where you need your matchups, right? Well, there. here here is so. another uh thing that we got wrong last time. We we would say Soderblom, uh. Soderblom, and it sounds like it's Soderblom. I have been saying Soderblom, and I apologize. I got to get the tendies name right. But hey, he uh. got his second win of the season, thirty nine saves. Yeah. I love what I'm seeing from this kid. I I hope they keep him up. He's getting the experience. He yeah. needs it. Yeah, it look, it looking looking really good so far. So you keep building the guy's confidence, keep building him up, and you know see what say where where it goes. So that that opens up a little bit of the argument. I think we had talked about a little bit uh, last uh, go around about. So then, what do you do with those two uh, veteran guys that are supposed to be leading off? I guess you basically let those guys play against each other to the see backup. who might end up. Yeah. Yes. So for for the yeah, you know, uh, if they're going to be starters or not, I mean, if you if you can keep Soderblom up on the, as backup, then you take the uh, the other old veteran guys and pin them against each other for who's going to stick around and who maybe get punted at the, uh, the trade uh, deadline. That's good if, point. That, if that's possible, you know what, man? I think if Morazic continues to play like he's playing, he might draw some interest yeah. at the deadline. I think he's just man, he's making. Yeah, he's been he's been good. I know he got that injury against. I don't the first game we can't count, but since then he's been it's been solid, man. Yeah, I I know. I'm sure the Maple Leafs are probably thinking like, "Hey, we're, we took a chance on Matt Murray. It's not working." Elio yeah. Samsonov, eh, it's it's a gamble, but Marezik, mm. he's not bad, and on a good team, he might even be a lot better. You know, I mean. They they gave up on. I, we're always going to the Maple Leafs, but that's where he came from. So yeah. Jack, they let Jack Campbell go, and hey, they yeah. might want to. They might actually want to call back for the playoffs and get a solid backup. You know, if, hey, I, yeah, at this rate, I mean, let's let's go with it because you know what? Then that bodes well because he's got curb appeal now. So yes, he can stay healthier and and play not too bad. He's you know, he's playing that's good enough. Point. You want yeah. people looking at him while he's good, not trying to you know sell. Uh, you know, a dented can of peaches to somebody, you know, at the trade deadline, you got no leverage. I don't think Staylock is going to draw much. I just, I don't see it. I think um, it's going to be uh, Marezic and Soderblom, I think. Uh, I think they just, I'd like to see more of Soderblom than Marezic, but, you know, I, if Marezic keeps playing him, I mean, you got to keep playing him if he's going to, if you're planning on moving him, you know. some Someone might want to take a gamble on it and I, you know, I, I could see somebody do it. So, all right, well, let's get some NHL news in. There's really not much except we, we kind of just mentioned the blues are, we don't know what the hell's going on with those guys. And we got New Jersey's actually playing very well, which me and Mike, if you listen, Mike, Mike and I are, you know, we're kind of tough on Jersey and Jack Hughes yeah. we got, and Dougie Hamilton. But uh, yeah, they've been. It's it's weird. You you'd kind of think New Jersey would be bad and St. Louis would be really good. It's just the other way around. It's just weird. But yeah. But anyway, let's get to some news. Um, I got two reports from the Blue Jackets actually, which they aren't having a good season either. This and the, you know they made that big splash for Johnny Goudreau, and I thought yeah. they'd be a little decent, you know. But uh, Patrick Laine is having some injury problems. He's got another injury now. 
and he's out three to four weeks okay. with a sprained ankle. That's a tough one for them, guys. He's he's the goal yeah. scorer over there. And ever since he, he got traded, I feel like it's just been tough for him to stay healthy. Stay healthy and I think just have a good outlook there too because i think the initial fit seemed awful rough it, it was going to be a, a turbulent uh relationship with them and everything seemed to quiet down but yeah now he's getting he's getting hurt yeah. i know he was excited you know getting getting uh a new teammate in johnny goudreau i mean how can you not be excited like this guy's gonna get you the puck more you're probably gonna get more goals, which will lead to more money. And he ended up signing that yeah. four-year extension. And pretty fair deal. I like Patrick Line. I think he's good. Yeah. I, I know at one time there was a lot of comparisons with him and Austin Matthews, and I laughed about it. I'm like, Austin Matthews yeah. is an elite goal scorer. Like, yeah, Line is not there yet. He's very cocky and arrogant, it seemed like, when he was yeah. with Winnipeg. But since he's been traded, I feel like he's really kind of matured a little bit. He's having fun. He, you know, you, I don't know if you see these pictures of him walking into the game with these weird suits on he looks like a bond villain you know and yeah. those, those are so cool and he's having a good time you could tell he's just loving life down there so hopefully he gets healthy soon because he's uh he's a big part of that team yeah big but time. uh yeah, and then oh, their true. other piece on the back end uh zach Warinsky, he will be out for the season this is a tough blow with yeah. a shoulder injury yeah, that's rough. So too. I always, I say this when I'm talking Blue Jackets, like, hey, they got rid of Seth Jones and they made Zach Wierenski the man. I thought that was the right move. Uh, the mm -hmm. kid is good. He's a young American kid. He's I think he's making the same money as Seth Jones too. Uh, he's a gamer. Right. I I remember one of his first games. He took a puck to the to the mouth, just gnarly. It looked nasty. He's blood everywhere, and yeah. you could just tell he, he's a competitor. But that's, yeah. you can't, those are two hard, you know, like spots, two positions to fill in. So, I, dude, the Jackets might finish pretty bad this season. They they could easily get that first round pick. So, yeah. Or at least look for a good rental trade deadline. If, uh, yeah, I think they're, you know, they're sitting the dead last right now. And I think Pittsburgh's right above them, which is another surprising thing. The, the, the Penguins are struggling True. right now. So, yeah. Hopefully these guys get it together, but there's really not much news going on. Uh, the, the Hawks are currently taking on the, um, I'm sorry, the uh, Hurricanes right now. And the Hurricanes yeah. are a very solid team, solid coaching. And at end of the first period, yeah. the, the Canes uh, are up 2 nothing on us right now. We'll probably... Bunch of jerks. Yeah, the Don Cherry bunch of jerks. Cause how do you feel about that celebration crap after the game? Do you like it? No, I think it's really minor league. Yeah, I think it's like you should be selling, selling. You know, it's like you're trying to sell some sort of goofy, I don't, goofy product. I, yeah, it, I don't know how I feel about. But it. Hey, I think it's I cool mean, for yeah. like the younger crowd, like you said. I, I know, like the, the Wolves games, kind of. Oh, the young kids are they love all that stuff with you know like skates. He's skating around and stuff, yeah. and shooting t-shirts out in the into the stands and stuff. I don't know. I th I think yeah. it. I like the salute to the crowd, like the Hawks do. Yeah. I think that's cool, but it's a little it too cool. much when you're, you know, playing bowling, you know, with another yeah. teammate, something like that. Well, look at it. Look at it like this. Like I think it's. I mean, I guess per mark, whatever it works. works in your market. It works. I guess you know your yeah. audience, audience. Go with it, but at the same point, it's like you see other sports where you. You after a win, okay, like you salute the crowd. Yeah, I agree. I, I like that. It. Yeah, but well, but it's like say like example, maybe like football where you go, you touch down, and then you're gonna overly celebrate with the oh, whole yeah, team. Yeah, yeah, you know, depending how tight the, the the zebras are, you're gonna get a penalty that's gonna affect your 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 your. So there's pendants for doing that. But if for hockey, it's after a win and you're doing that, that's kind of to me that's. I don't know. I think it's a little, it's a little excessive. Yeah, it's, Again, it's sort of like it, rubbing, it, you know rubbing what? in, like being a sore loser, but you're being a bad winner at the same time. It, it works there. I think they're they're not a big market, and you know they get behind it. It it could bring people in to see. Hey, I want to see their celebrations and you know stuff like that. I I I personally think the team is just good. Like I want to go see that team. I mean they 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 know how to. They got a great coach. They they traded for a. I think an elite defenseman. I think Brent Burns is an elite defenseman. He's got two assists against the Hawks tonight. And I think he's a guy you want in the playoffs and who can shut down like a shut down like a um 
a top top like all line in the playoffs. I think I think Carolina is going to go yeah. far this year. I don't know if they're going to win the I cup. I think so for sure. They're in it. To, they're in it to win it, especially with that acquisition. Yeah. I know I didn't see that coming when they, the Brent uh, Burns trade. Yeah, that, I didn't see. Yeah, it. when that when that got moved, I said, "Oh, like well, well then, I'm like they're going to be." They, uh, they don't extra. bring in like you know big free agencies. They trade for you know they. Well, I guess who do you consider their best player? Sebastian Aho. I think maybe Aho. Yeah, Freddie um, Anderson's a very good goalie. He's he's overlooked. Yes, I think. Uh, yeah, I but I agree. but I getting Brent Burns is a big deal. I think that that was a big splash yeah. for them. And I I don't know if they're going to win the cup, but I think they're going to end up maybe like top four. I think in the yeah they're going to make a good run, a good strong. I mean, I'll, I'll I'll cheer for them if it's against you know like a team I don't like. I think that uh, yeah. they're built to win. I did. They just need to get over yeah. that hump. I think that if they traded for a good forward very good forward, a top six guy, or maybe a top three, yeah. they can do it. If the goaltending stays healthy, yeah. you know, Ranta is a good backup, but he gets hurt a lot. Anderson yes. gets hurt at the end of the year. They just got to manage yeah. these games right. But I think what's going to be crucial to their success, too, is, I mean, right now, I think Tampa Bay is kind of in a, a rough position, too. Yeah. So depending on how, because, you know, they're kind of, I look at Tampa Bay sort of like the Sharks of yesteryear, where, like, they were always... Yeah. They're always really good and always at the top of the West, but they were always the bridesmaid when it came into you know the yeah never that that second to last round in the playoffs. So it's like, do are the are you know if Tampa, depending on how Tampa Bay regenerates through the year, if they don't, I mean, if they kind of stay sort of flat, then it's only going to help bolster uh, Carolina's Carolina and the Maple Leafs probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it it's it's going to be interesting. I I think that. I, I would say the four best teams out east would probably be Tampa, Carolina, Toronto, and the Rangers. And yeah, I, I think I one of those that. guys will probably win the cup this year. I don't see anybody out west that's scary. If I had to pick a team from the west, I'm yeah. I think it's McDavid's year. I think McDavid is getting pissed off like Nathan McKinnon did last yeah. year. He's like, I'm sick of being in this league and I haven't done anything, you know? I think he McDavid yeah. is just as hungry as him, so and that's strange too, because I mean, think about uh, growing up. You know, the Western Conference was always the the good hockey, intense hockey stuff you wanted to must see yeah. TV, you wanted to watch. And then East was always kind of just you know, oh, maybe not as hard of a, a nose definitely brand flipped. Of hockey, yeah, but it was I, different. Yeah, it's, yeah, it sort of flipped, it definitely I think, did. East East too. is getting powerful. I, I I don't know what's going on with the West. I you got. Colorado, I would say Vegas is surprising, but they I, they don't really scare me. I don't think they're. Not I mean, anymore, they're good. No. They're they're winning right now, but I don't yeah. think they're going to get it done unless hey, maybe Robin Leonard will have a surprise. I'm coming back for the playoffs type of thing. What? Panda pa, 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 power. I, I'm a big fan of him. I loved him here. I thought he was uh, the reason why the Hawks weren't dead last was because of Robin Leonard. He was just so good that year. We had we had Robin Leonard and Corey Crawford. As a goaltending tandem, yeah. it's crazy. It was that was a very very good goaltending tandem. But so hey, we got uh, the exciting part of this little show we're doing here. Me and you've oh, yeah, been talking buddy. about this for weeks. Yeah, we're burning the midnight this, oil. This on is going to be a bloodbath. But so we'll get right <laughs> to it. The Lion and I are putting out our favorite all time Hawks lineup pre two thousand six ish lockout. So. The rules were modern era, yeah, pre Kane and Taves era, Keith Siebes era type of thing. We wanted to see whose team would win in a game, and we're actually gonna. I'm gonna actually put it on Twitter. Team Lion or Team Tendy, you vote who you think would win. But uh, let's get right into this. So, I was a gentleman, and I gave you the first round pick. So, we'll, we'll, you know what? And I took. And I took no mercy. We'll start. We'll just start with the goalies. Who did you pick for your all-time Hawks goalie? All-time Hawks goalie for me in the modern era, I took uh, Dominic Hasek. I took the Dominator. That that's a very good pick because he he was an awesome goalie, man. He just the uh, the human slinky yeah. they called him. But uh, you did. so it was. Go it ahead. Was, I'm sorry, I cut yeah. you off. Sorry. It, very very much in in the think my way of thinking for most of my picks were they that they. I took even though they were Blackhawks, I had to think of them in the round like their entire career. So like what they became, like 
Yeah. You know, he Ajik was he was good with us, but like we didn't get to see much of him because of the you know, the battle in with one and two with him and the Eagles. So but I mean, if you look at it in the scope, like he definitely rounded into a, you know, Hall of Fame player. So that's why I was my rationale was like I I'll go I know you had your attack, <laughs> so I'm like, well, fine. I'll 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 concede and I'll I'll go that way. So that that was my pick. Well, you brought up the Eagle. That was my pick. Obviously, I'm going with my guy. Um, I think I think the Hawks made the right decision. To be honest, when when they got rid of Hashik, I thought that I thought Belfort was the better goalie. I mean, he just came off a a Calder year. He won the Vesna a couple times. I it just I I it sucks that he never got to win a cup here. It, it, it just, really it is, sucked. you know. But I never cheered so hard in my life when he won. I think it was ninety nine with Dallas. He he and he funny yeah. he he played Hashik that year against in Buffalo, and both yeah. were solid, very good. Oh yeah. And they always talk about Dom Hashik's goals against average. Belfour's was better. So that yeah. that is my goalie, and we will will jump to your your two defensemen. My two defensemen. Okay, so this was interesting enough. I took my D1 and D2. I took uh, Gary Suter and uh, Dave Manson. <laughs> so when you when you picked Suter, I was pissed because I'm a big Gary Suter fan. <laughs> I actually I actually met him at uh, Southwest oh, nice. Ice Arena in Elsip. Oh, nice. And I'm looking. I'm like, Dad. I was I was well, I forgot how old I was. I, I think it was a squirt. We had a tournament, and I'm like, Dad, that guy looks like Gary Suter, and he goes. Yeah, that's Gary Suter. I'm like, why is he wearing a white t-shirt and blue sweatpants? Like he just looked like a he looked like a just a dad who woke up too early. Like, oh God, yeah. I want to go home. I'm tired, you know, stuff like that. But I end up going, I'm like, hey, what's up, Gary? He's like, hey, what's up, buddy? Good luck in your tournament. I was like, oh, this is awesome. But I was pissed off when you picked yeah. him. But that was a very solid pick. Very good defenseman. Big shot. Yeah. Guy had just a big shot. Very point, you know, good with there. Chris Chelios. That was a good pairing. Yeah, I really yeah. like that. Oh, well, you feel you got to have the balance. Somebody's got to stay at home. Somebody's got to maybe a little bit more uh, offensive minded. So, so, like, that's why I thought a little bit about the Manson pick, especially because, you know, like those guys with the big. Yeah, I was going to just ask you, like, so why Manson? You just want a tough guy back there to beat up kinda, on yeah, my I wingers? Kinda balance, yeah, I kind of kind of balance it out a little bit. I know, like, I originally had picked up Paul Cox, okay, which would have been. Would have been lights if you're thinking career career wise. Would have been lights out. Like that's a huge, huge punch. But at the same point, by the time Coffee landed on the Hawks, I think he maybe only played about a year. He yeah. was a S- shell same with Bobby was. Orr. He, Bobby Orr was traded yeah. here his last you know remaining years, yeah. and that poor guy's knees were just done. You know, so you yeah. know, so it was kind of like which 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 rung of Hawks actual longer time served Hawks. You know, from like one tour, one tour of duty, two tours of duty, would he, would we stick? So I kind of said, well, and at that point, it was a toss between uh, Steve Smith and Dave Manson, and I said, yeah. you know, I don't know, Manson got a, a little bit more points That's on tough. there. So yeah, That's gonna, tough for my forwards yeah. to go against for sure. So for sure. I picked Dougie Wilson just because I, mm-hmm. I need a I need a bomber back there putting thirty goals in a year, and this yeah. was very tough for me. Very tough for me. I had to pick. Judas Chelios, shout out! Ooh, the tan shout man! Shout out to Angie, your tan, your tan man. <laughs> but uh, the golden very, god, the golden very god. tough for me to pick. But I'm not denying he was a very, very good defenseman for the Hawks. Couple Norris's, he, he was, he was a beast back there. I think uh, that'll match up against Dave Manson. I, I got to give the edge to Manson. I think he's tougher, but Chelios could hold yeah. his own. He was a tough little scrapper. Yeah, you could have a rough night with Chelly uh, yeah, in there, regardless. He's of the, relentless you know. back there. So, yeah. my D, let's see, Su- I'm sorry, Chelios and Dougie Wilson versus Manson, and I'm sorry, who else? Oh, Gary Suter. So, Suter. that's good. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. It's interesting. I like it. Yeah, I like the forward, where we went with the forward. Yeah, go ahead. So I think go ahead. Tell uh, me your forwards. On that one. Well, I think for me, uh, we'll at least go center to center. Um, I, I was going to have my guy, uh, Denny Savard, be my, my center. I think I feel obligated to pick Dennis because not only is he my one of my favorite Blackhawks of all time, but him and me share a birthday. Oh, nice. So nice. I feel, 
I feel I feel a general kinship with him, and I've met him. A oh few yeah, he's times, awesome. Actually, he's uh, well, he was great through the years, and yeah, great guy. He's yeah, he's really every for the older generation of you know the the list and, and players that grew up watching. I mean, he really gets it. And so it's it's some guys you meet them and they're just sort of they don't understand the whole. Hype oh yeah, he the, gets it or whatever. But but Denny Denny's a Renaissance man, so he's he was a good guy. It was it was good to meet him all those times. So yeah, I'd say that was where my he, he was from. great, man. I met him at the uh, season ticket holder party at uh, Navy Pier. And no one was nice. in his line. And I'm just, I see him sitting there. I'm like, hell yeah, I'm going to go talk to Denny Savard. And I only had two kids at the time, my two boys. And yeah. um, my one son was still in a stroller. And I, I told my wife, just hang back. I don't want to go through like, you know, the lines that they, like the movie theater line thingy. What do you call it? Yeah. So I'm going up and down. Yeah. Like the cow, cow yeah thing, so I'm yeah. going up and down this thing. I'm like, okay, here I'm looking at him. It's kind of awkward. And. Me and my other son are up there, and he's, you know, he's awesome. He's fooling around with my kid. He's like, how you doing, buddy? And and he, he points to my wife. He goes, is that your wife and your other, your kid out there? I said, yeah, we didn't want to, we didn't want to bring him up here and go through the, the maze, the rat maze here. And he goes, oh, don't worry about it. He gets up, and he walks over to him, picks him up out of the stroller, and takes a picture and then he kissed him on the head and I'm, my wife was just like oh my god he's a sweetheart stuff like that and took a picture and i tell my kid all the time he, he has no idea obviously who he is yeah. he's like even now he's like who why did he do that i'm like he's just a good dude like he was it was awesome yeah if you ever need to know how good of a man dennis savard is go back to his watch his number retirement ceremony he thanked everybody yeah i was I mean, there it could yeah. have been anybody. It could have been, you know, the, the night night janitor at the, uh, at the stadium. He thanked everybody. That, yeah. So that's the kind of grateful guy that guy is. I he, have that know. banner still. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, I was at that game sitting in 320 with my, my dad, my buddy, and his dad when we were younger. And it was awesome. It, it, was, it, it felt like it, it took a long time. Hey, it was like, oh, my yeah. God, is this, are we going to ever play? You know, but... Looking yeah. back, I'm like, that was cool. I've only been to a couple. I, I went to the Magnuson and Pierre Palat uh, retirement. I was there too. That yeah. was cool. They gave the uh, banners and stuff, the number threes. Pretty cool. But I still have yeah. the Savard one, and I think it's, it has a lemon head uh, like sponsor, yeah. you know, underneath. Like, yeah, or Fer- the, the, what's it called? The Ferrera Pan, like the. T- Fire, yeah. the red hot fireball. Remember that was a big thing. Yeah, don't be a yeah. lemon head. Eat lemon head. But yeah, Savard, good pick. Can't go wrong with Denny. Uh, so for me, I picked Jr. I just yeah. uh, he was probably the the top dog when I was a kid watching, and you know he put up fifty goals back to back. Just sucks that he couldn't yeah. be a lifer Blackhawk, but. Yeah, it was it's a shame tough. for the guy that scored the last goal in the stadium yeah. there. Oh, and all that. Yeah, it was a great you goal know. against uh, Felix Potvin. And yeah. a good pass, a good redirect, I believe, what was it, by Joe Murphy? And a beautiful pass yeah, by Imani. A- yeah. Imani, yeah. God, bang, I would have loved to see those two play together longer, oh. Ronick and Imani. That would have been really just awesome. Boston boys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that was good, man. Then uh, my right wing on uh, Savvy's right side, of course, you know, almost feel obligatory the you know the hot the man the man of the hour usually lately on social media the uh steve Larmer. yeah yeah the retired 28 so, for sure yeah god i mean god how you know how many numbers he put up while he was a black hawk and you know all that just, i do you do you remember he, watching well, he was the rangers too, do you just, remember watching him were you young still i mean you, were you're, you're yeah. i i do but i mean vaguely but i mean it was still that was like when i was in just beginning gotcha. of my fandom yeah. so you still don't you still don't absorb maybe everything you just know the the names and the numbers and i mean yeah you're looking at his numbers like just Jersey, you know, just numbers. insane my uncle is a huge hawk guy and you know like the the 80s 90s type of era he used to tell me yeah. like larmer would have an amazing game and you know they would put a camera in front of him after and he would always say, "Yeah, man, I didn't i didn't do nothing this guy did this you know he would never like never <laughs> yeah he would never like take the praise he would always give it to somebody else and that's just a yeah. he's just a respectful like just classless guy or class yeah. guy you know you that's the guy you want on your team and it was cool yeah it's a quiet worker you know i mean even when uh i think there were i don't know what happened they were asking something was happening i think foley was 
was talking about they actually got Larmer to show up to some sort of event. They're like, oh, you know, here's, you know, oh, oh Larmer oh, yeah, up yeah, there yeah. living with the Eskimos. Yeah, that was the uh, fan convention. I think it was, um, they had the recent Rookie of the Year uh, players on, like a panel. I think it was uh, yeah. Kane, Larmer, and who else was a recent Rookie of the Year the Hawks had? Was it Panarin? I forget, but. He was in contention. Yeah. yeah, he was in a call to I, run. I, I, I remember Larmer being up there, and he's just like a, you know what? He never wanted the praise or the spotlight, but he was he was good enough to have it, yeah. you know? Yeah. Sure. So, yeah. so Larmer, good pick by you. Uh, I am going to go with my guy, Amani. And like I said, I want to see more of Ronick and Amani. I, I feel like we got cheated when we were kids because I don't feel like it was long enough, you know? And I... No. I think those guys would have put up amazing numbers if you know it worked out with Ronick's contract, and um, yeah. it would have just been awesome. Yeah. By the way, you're welcome. By <laughs> Thank the way, you. because I can't do proper no, research. No, no. I, I double booked two right wings. I yeah. I think I wanted to pick Hosa, but we kind of had to change the rules a little bit just to. Otherwise, yeah. we'd be picking Keith Siebes and all these guys that just kind of won three cups, and it wouldn't be fun. So yeah. So what about your left wing? The lefty man. Well, I kind of this was a this was an interesting one too, in, in lieu of that, and I decided against you know for time period we're talking about. I'm like, well, I like I wanted a guy with a, had a good rookie campaign, nice big body, so you know he could do a little banging while he's scoring. Uh, I went with uh, Eric Daze. That's an interesting pick, man. I I remember they had a lot of hype for this guy, and he was good. It's just. He was good. He just wasn't uh, durable. Yeah, that the, was I, the, the bad pain. back. I think he had a very bad back or bad shoulder. Or whatever. Yeah, well, he's a big, big guy. guy. I mean, and even now he looks really good. I mean, even if his sweater <sighs> does fit like an actual sweater, I mean, he's, you know what, man? He's if still he a- started like say Kane and Taves, I think he'd be like an yeah. unstoppable force with this newer, yeah, not as much hitting. You know, NHL. I think he would be very good. He just kind of played in an era where it was still. Like the clutch and grab, you know, it was tough. Like they'd hit you, and I, maybe he yeah. just, you know, he couldn't take it. But he was, he was good. I think he was an All Star MVP too. I want to say, I think he won a car one year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. he did actually. So that's a that's solid, man. But uh, for me, I had to pick another guy that gets it, who's always, you know, signing autographs for the kids and anybody. I went with the Golden Jet. Bobby Hall. I just think it would be so cool to see Jeremy Roenick center and Bobby Hall and Tony Amani with, you know, Chelly and Dougie Wilson in the back and Eddie in that. I just think yeah. it would, I, I'd probably put the C on him too for my team. Bobby Hall, captain. Ooh. And nothing against Stan Makita. I know he's the greatest, n- yeah. greatest hawk of all time as of now. He's a center. Yeah. I just, for, I didn't really get to see him much. I think I, learn more about him from Wayne's world, quite honestly. <laughs> but yeah. but yeah. I, I just loved Ronick as a kid. I had to pick him. No disrespect against Makita. I know people are gonna be like, how do you leave him out? Well that's it's nothing against him. I just I like I like JR. <laughs> that's my team. It's it's the it's the the glory of the spoils, yeah. man. How much for a charter yeah. franchise, how many great names have come through, yeah. especially at those positions. But I, I think that it would it would be cool and uh I think you got a solid team. I think I, I like my team. Well, we're going to find out on yeah. Twitter. We're going to put a little poll out, see who's got a cooler, better team. So we got to know what are the, who's the yeah, people's Yeah, But we got one more thing we had to add in, like a little wild card type of thing. Absolutely. Who is. I mean, why not? We talk about he it. He is enough, on so. your bench. But if something goes wrong, he can come off your bench. <laughs> Who is your enforcer? Yeah, who, my, who is my insurance policy? Well, you. Again, like you said at the begin at the top of this hour, that you had you had given me the first pick, so I felt almost obligated to to concede. But no, I'm a ruthless player, and I said no, I'm going to take it. So my uh, my insur- my bench insurance policy is one Robert Probert. Oh, yeah, that. So that's a good pick. I would have picked that too. But yeah. second, my second pick, second choice, I guess you could say. Is not bad. I'm a fan of him. I think he's a great analyst right now. I'm going to go with the Grim Reaper, Stu Grimson. I think he can hold his own against Proby. I think he would probably say Proby was better than him, but still, yeah. it's a it's a good it's a good second place guy to have. It's yeah. a good trade off because I think early in uh, Grimson's career, he had a rougher time short fighting the shorter guys. 
and to for Bob's Bob's deal was that he was a little bit of a slow starter sometimes. So I guess like you know, a pretty pretty uh, evenly matched bout. Oh yeah, there still my all time one of my all time favorite Hawks, Bobby Bobby Probert. I it just if oh, yeah. if he could if he could have like stayed clean, you know, I think he. They, yeah. they say he was a very good hockey player in Detroit. Like he was, he did have some good, good numbers. Mitts. Like he was, you know, early on. Yeah, he was still a, a little bit of a scoring prowess in there too. I think it was smart you know? bringing him over to the Hawks. He's uh, he knew his yeah. role. He, he like Tony Amani said he was he was a good hockey player. Like he knew what he was doing. He knew what you know how, when to fight, when not to fight, and you know towards the end. And hey, you get to the pro. You got to get to the pros. Yeah. You know. Somehow you can't get, you know, you can't say you're the the best of the best by, you know, just being some, yeah. you know, pug. Definitely gas, the you know? heavyweight champ, I think. I Right now, I yeah. I guess you could say Ryan Reeves is probably the, the toughest guy in the league. But, I mean, how many tough guys are there? You know, less than five, yeah. well, maybe let me, three. Let me ask you this. Who would your uh, second choice? R- Ryan Vandebush. Been? Yeah. Vandebush? I probably would have gone for another left winger. I would have gone with Al Secor. Yeah, you were telling me about his fights as a hawk. How many? Ninety six fights as a black. And he hawk. could put the puck in the and net. So he's yeah. a big, big guy too. If you, I remember him playing for the Wolves and seeing him, and he's a big body guy. So you, you put him there in that, you know, the Clydesdale was it yeah, Clydesdale yeah. line with him and Savard. I remember, yeah. Like those guys. I mean, just big, just a, a big guy. So I mean, you know, he'd be good grit you know to answer For the sure. bells so i thought i'm like and, and you get so you get your enforcer plus you still get some scoring prowess because he, he was still some, a, he put some good a, numbers a up yeah. too you know lc cord yeah. so i mean by all means but i just when bob's on the table you always you always go full bob you know what i feel bad i i guess like an honorable mention type of guys i i left out but i it was just too hard yeah. i couldn't pass up the other guys i like dirt graham i like keith carney yeah. uh murray craven yeah. guys like that you know, like the, the Bernie Nichols, <laughs> they had some, yeah. they had some good players. You know, that to to play, but the Hawks, they they were solid, man. In our in our nineties little decade, I think we we're we were both younger. It, it was it was I I loved it, man. I wish they put more home games on. I actually had to go to the games, yeah. but still very yeah. very entertaining. And we had good goaltending. We had Jeff Hackett, you know, Eddie Belfour. Yeah, you know. Even you know, even guys like you know, with uh, Jocelyn uh, Tebow in the two thousands, yeah, he was good and stuff. Yep. You know, just guys that you wish could have. Yep. You know, just those teams. I think that we always talk about it. Those teams were the teams that they had so much heart. They they were only a couple moves away, and it, it was just it was a heartbreaker that they would get into the playoffs and they'd lose against the usual yeah, suspects Oilers, every Detroit, time. but yeah. they were just barn burner yeah. games. Well, like we so. we'll jump into the Hawks now. They you know they're competing. We got to give him yeah. some time. I think it's going to be a little bit longer than people think. You know, I think it's going to going to go yeah. through some up and downs. Right now, we're going through some ups, which is good. But eventually, we're gonna something's going to go you know south because the, 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 on paper the team's not that good. They're just got a good coach. I think he he's doing what he can to you know make the team yeah. like on a, have a good compete level. So that's it. I guess you got to wait and see for how the. Uh... You know, with the the ups and the downs, when it comes to the downs, you know how he keeps the keeps the room focused and prepared. So I mean, that's the big thing. Like you can, it's all good when they're still squeak get, squeaking it out and getting some greasy goals and making wins. But if, what happens when they start slumping a little? How, how, they how do yep. they react to that adversity? Is what's going to show show you who they are. So, what well, you got? Anything else, man? Yeah. No, sir, man. We we we. I think we we cut down all the. Yeah, we the, got did all paid all the bills and paid all the dues, and uh, old Mikey won't be uh, won't be giving us thirty lashes for running Hopefully too long. Hopefully, we get so. uh, we get the captain back soon. I uh, like I said, he just had a baby boy, and it's it's a little, it's it's hard, you know. He's he's old. Yeah. He's a little older. He's a veteran. He's about forty ish, I think. So he he's. It, He's going. Either. He's going through the reset. It's tough. I'm 36 now, and I had to just do that. It sucks. It's hard being old, but yeah. uh, he'll get used to it, and then he'll be back on here and taking over and making us sound a lot better. Obviously, but um, the Hawks, you know, currently we we said they're playing the Hurricanes. I believe it's two nothing still, and their next game will be against the St. Louis Blues. So this is this is a big test, I think, for the Hawks and the Blues. Big game for both teams. Yeah. So. We're going to report on it mm-hmm. next week, and um, 
Yeah, if you got anything else, man, go spit it out. No, we're we're, good. we're all good, my friend. I think we cover all that, and don't uh, don't forget to keep a you know you do that poll. We're gonna post on the yep, Twitter. We're gonna do that. I'm gonna ever, set uh, that up right now, amigo. And uh, yeah, do that. And if you got any uh, any urge to listen to music or talk about music in general, there's this interesting podcast, uh, the Double Groove. Absolutely, absolutely. That's uh, our our guy right here, Dom's podcast. Give it a give it a like and a subscribe. And don't forget to yep. give our podcast a like and a sub. And Do we it. will catch you next week. And we hopefully we're yeah, talking absolutely. about two wins, comeback win from the Hurricanes, and a win from St. Louis to keep them in the basement. All right, everybody. Yes. Thank you very much. Goodbye. <laughs>